Welcome to the Seedman Podcast. What's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday night, and we are here making the madman. We are the scene snobs on you all live. We What's are up? live and in color. So exciting. It is brought to you in color vision. I got like a brightness going on here. I got to figure this out because I've, I've moved the cave around a little bit. So yeah, you've, like, you've wiped the cave clean. So now you have like this bright palette and you have to, you, you got to fix that, bro. I got to fix the lighting. The lighting yeah. needs to be fixed. Yeah. You got to have it more like this where I'm in my ominous dark setting. <laughs> with your, with your check, your grid behind you. Well, yeah. I mean, you got to make sure you stay on top of your tasks. <laughs> I will say I'm the this. one who put that grid together. <laughs> used it for it a solid year, <laughs> and then it was never used again. <laughs> that's I remember that. <laughs> I remember that's how it generally implementation works. is amazing. <laughs> uh, I will say, I, you know, it's fun to be back. Um, just a quick announcement to everybody. Uh, a couple of quick announcements as we're getting started. One, we're sorry about Star Trek week. It just it, things life got away. Um, it was just too crazy. I couldn't. I could not pull it off with everything going on. It has um, been a lot going on. You shouldn't be so hard on yourself. Uh, we do thank everyone for understanding, but Mick is a very busy person. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, I'm a very busy person. Life happens. We all understand. We appreciate you and love y'all. So thanks for listening. And thanks for being cool with us uh, not having our Super Star Trek week. But it's great because we have Super Star Trek show. And I promise oh, yeah. because we're not having Star Trek week, I will be bringing up Star Trek a lot more. <laughs> and I, you know, I'll tell you, uh, you know, and we will. I mean, we're going to come back. We're going to show our appreciation of it. Um, of course, we love Star Trek. And, and I, I do want to do the script reading, but it might be a spanned out version. Uh, it's just that the week, like I said, got away from me. I just couldn't. You know, it seemed like things were piling up, and then we got to it like a week before, and I was like, oh, I have all these great ideas, and I want to implement them. And it was like Monday, and I didn't even realize it was Monday. I thought it was Tuesday. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I thought it was Sunday, and but it was Monday, and I'm like, oh, my God, I need to prep for tomorrow's show. Yeah, three-day but weekends mess me up, man. The yeah. every time. It, it, and it was just – it was craziness. Um I, but and it's sad because last year was a lot of fun and it was very seat of your pants. But um, you know, this year we're stepping into something that's going to be a lot of fun, even more so. Like it, we love Halloween here for certain. I mean, oh, yeah. Casey's a big Halloween hound. Yeah, well, big time. And I'll definitely be dressing up as a Star Trek character for Halloween. I love it. I absolutely maybe love my that. favorite Star Trek character, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, you know it. Drop beats, not bombs, people. Them's his words right there. Well, he was in the Savage Curtain, bro. That was the original sure. series episode. Just saying. With a fantastic interaction between him and Uhura. That's true. And it was good. It was all right, I'm not gonna say it was a good one, but it was some, it was one. But it was it was, it was definitely an episode. It, it was, was without a doubt uh, an episode of uh that series, the original series. That's true. And uh, we got a few people joining us so far. We got uh, Dave Markle, man. Hi, Dave. What's, What's up, up, stud? How you been, bruh? I haven't heard from you in a while, man. It's I know, right? You. Radar's here. What's, What's up, up Radar? brother? How you doing, Radar? Um, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. good evening, Paul. One of our sponsors of the show, Consider It Done Auto Detailing down in North Carolina. So if you're in the area, go over to the scenesnobs.com. We got links to it. Uh, and check them out. We miss you too, Dave. We miss you too. Miss your face. And Corinne says, "Hey guys, what's up?" Corinne? Hi, what's up, Corinne Chaba? So uh, another announcement that we have because we are getting gearing up for Halloween. Um, we're going to be celebrating hard here, and it starts real hard tonight. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. Casey and I are working on something big for a possible Halloween live show. Either way, we're going to do a live show. Oh yeah, got to. But I'm trying to acquire a very cool place to do it from. So I'm going to leave it at that. It's going to be, (laughs) yeah, your attic would be crazy. Um, We should do. I'm going to do an episode. I promise. I will do an episode where I do a walkthrough of my attic where I currently live. You know, one day when I'm not at work. We're going to save that for October. 
Oh, bro. I don't know if I want to. Look, I, I have no problem. Oddly enough, when my when River's around, she's always constantly terrified. She's like, please don't go up there. You know, can I come up with you? I'm terrified when you're up there, daddy. <laughs> she's so scared of it. And it gives me absolutely no fear. I become like, whatever, I got this. I'm dad. You know, you become sure. dad. You don't worry about it. You conquer all fears. And yet, when I'm by myself, I'm terrified. Like all the superstitions. I've got a salt line. Bro, I ain't messing around. There's Ouija boards up there. I found Ouija boards in my house that I newly moved into that had like years of dust collected on them, which means they hadn't been moved and I wasn't about to. You still there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just. I... <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but I was looking up one of the things we're going to talk about. So I was listening to you. Right. And then you stopped talking. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I don't know. I got thrown off. And that I'm was like, amazing. Hey, I, I, I feel like, like we haven't had a miscue like that in a while. Wow. I feel. Did he, did he leave? Well, we barely are human. <laughs> one of the big things besides a live Halloween show, which Paul Oh, Jason's says, here. Hi, Jason. I want to be part of the Halloween live show. Let us get it figured out first. It's going to be pretty big. Uh, oh, Mystic is back. Mystical. What's up, Mystic? I love it. Do from the room the first saw was filmed in. I would actually love to do that, but uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to do it from a much spookier location. I don't know. Uh, Meat Locker is pretty spooky. So, Jason, yeah, that's just true. Jason Taylor and Fred Carroll's here, and Chris Hi, Sales guys. is here. We have so many awesome people wow. joining us. And so actually, many glad, fancy, wonderful humans. Because our next announcement. We're going to start doing prize giveaways, and they're going to be contests. Now, here's I thought how we have been doing prize giveaways. No, but this is going to be a Halloween. There's going to be multiple. Every episode until our Halloween episode, we're going to be doing a prize giveaway. We're going to have a contest each episode. Mm. Here's how it works, everybody. You have to be the first and correct on any one of our contests to message us on the scene snobs facebook page so you have to message us at the scene snobs facebook page i will not accept it anywhere else right has not our email nowhere nope. else our scene, our scene snobs facebook page now this so is jason no more trying to message me you know, yeah. I do enjoy that you put it on a whiteboard and you put it against your naked body. But oh yeah, seriously, if you, if you message me personally, my personal account, it's null and void. It has to be the Scene Snobs Facebook page. That's it. Only for the show questions, the contest. Now I'm getting to that. There's a lot of stuff that's going to be brewing around here, but there's some cool prizes that are coming up. So here's how it goes. Every <laughs> every episode, I'll get to those comments in a second. Every episode, it's going to be uh, a new either trivia question or a contest or something you have to do or this, that, and the other thing. Halloween, horror movie related. Like to just give you an idea, it's like what color boxers am I wearing? That's this week's question. No, I'm just kidding. Just That's a question. Just say it's a question. If you have an answer <laughs> and you're the first to put to message us on the Facebook page, the Scene Snobs Facebook page, then you would potentially be the winner. Just well, like that. That's how it's that easy. I will say this, uh, that is not going to be the question. They're all horror movie or <laughs> Halloween related. I don't um, know. That could be pretty horrifying depending on the day. Now, I am not going to say what the question is now. because That means you got to watch the show. I'm going to say it towards the end of the show. So, But I do have a very cool little contest question for you guys for this one, for the first one, the opening. And you're going to win, horror fans are going to win this very cool pillowcase. Ooh, fancy. Um, which I acquired from Things to Fear. Uh, very cool place. Uh, and we have some other gifts that are going to be in. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, like I said, you got to message us on the Scene Snobs uh, Facebook page. Now, that's now, you I mean. Do you mean message us? Like, how, how exactly is this supposed to be? Just as a comment? No, or you mean message the messenger? Message. The message, message no, via messenger. Not a comment. Too. All right, word. Message. You have okay. to send us a, an inbox message. Now, there's more to it. There's going to be more giveaways. Wow, we you're going really to... adding a lot here, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then there's going to be prizes galore. Um, so, the next one is we're going to have random contest prize giveaways from now until the 31st as well. They're all going to be social media based. 
So randomly, so you have to follow us on all of our social media. Everywhere. So everywhere. Go to the scenesynops.com. Go follow us everywhere. Subscribe to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Twitch. They're going to be on all there. They're not going to be on all of it. I may do one on Facebook today, one on YouTube today, one on TikTok today. Keep us on your toes, bro. Exactly. You're, you're a maniac. I love it. And those you can message wherever it is. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be the Facebook page. Those you can message wherever it is or email us or whatever or comment even. And the first person to get it right will take home the prize. So we got some fun stuff planned. We do have some people uh, kind of going on. Um, JC the chat says, is blowing up tonight. Love the new uh, background, Mick. Are you going to play the piano for us? No, but that and the guitars, I finally busted out a restrung one of my favorite guitars, and I'm going to start writing jingles. Oh, I man, need... you're going to become Elias from WWE. We're going to walk with Mick. <laughs> no, I, I listen, I, I'm tired of paying for music. I need to get my own. Um Truth. Corinne says first. Well, we'll see. See, message first. I mean, come on. There you go. <laughs> Hang out until the end and get the you have to answer the question correctly. Um, or whatever it is today. Tonight's a question. Tonight is a question that has a lot of answer to it. So you have to do your research. Hey oh, George G. Hey is George, here. what's up, buddy? Uh, Fred Carroll says, I think I will message everywhere, but the scene snobs page, that's the asshole I am. And the by asshole, you mean the guy who won't win. Lovingly, uh, lovingly sweet man is what I heard. Uh, George G. Three says, "Madman doesn't wear boxers; he's commando." John that, Matrix, you, I am. If that was the question, you were right. Boom! If you were. If that was the question, you were right. I mean, it's my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I always want to feel as close to it as I possibly can. So naturally, Commando. Yes. <laughs> Would also have accepted nude. Like through Facebook Messenger. Well, yes, yes. but it's through the Scene Snobs page. It's not through us. Uh, it's not through our personal pages. Um, is there a test on this at the end? There Let will be, run. but we'll be doing a refresher as well. Don't worry, Jason. We the only you thing you have to remember is each episode we're going to have a new contest. You get you you message us at the Scene Stops Facebook page, and the other thing to remember is follow us on all our social media because we're yes. going to have random contests from now until Halloween. Just do that anyway, because now we're going to start adding more fun stuff. And it, don't content. think that it's, these aren't going to be simple questions. Like who is Michael Myers first kill? It's not going to happen that way. I'm going to give you things to do. Sometimes it's not even going to be a question. Sometimes you're going to have to do stuff. Other times he might just stare at you awkwardly. Yeah. Right? You just Awkward. have to see how long you can go without blinking. I don't I'm, know. I'm plotting. A scavenger hunt of sorts. Ooh, so, I like it. With that, Chris Remember, Sale it says, can't be illegal. No, not illegal. Nothing's Please illegal. Please don't hurt anyone. No, no self-harm. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's going to be fun. It's all going to be in the name of fun. Depends on how accurate or gentle were you with, the, with your lawnmower. Aggressive. Apparently, Mick thinks we retain information. Sometimes. Uh, some of you. <laughs> George G3, I will fail. I'm not a horror fan. I don't you know? like that attitude. You know what? You need to cut that out right now, George, because there's a very good chance you won't fail. So well, think about that, friends. too. Do you have friends who are horror fans? Do you, or do you have friends who are fans of awesome comedy shows? Send them our way. That's what I love. Uh, Jason Taylor messaged me. Why? I didn't ask any questions yet. No, no. You know why. It's for yeah. that special thing. It's that other thing. George, I don't think you enjoy movies. That is true. I've heard <laughs> no, George's shows. George definitely enjoys movies, and I love George's take on a lot of movies. It's oh. actually quite brilliant. All the wrong movies. Will there be a select <laughs> time? Because I work from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m., so I sleep usually until early afternoon and don't want to miss it. Don't worry, Paul. We will make sure to make it completely random and last at least 24 hours. The thing that I'm doing and I have planned is like – there's going to be stuff for you to do. So, like, yeah, maybe you'll miss one or two here on social media because of the hours. Don't worry. There's going to be stuff available. And you know when the shows are. And the shows are, you know. And, again, like, this is open. Now, I am not posting on any of our social media the questions that I ask on the show. Hmm. It's only for the people who watch live or later go back and watch or listen. Anybody who does that, they get to uh, join in on this. I'm not giving this out to the to our social media. Um, 
This is exclusive to our audience. Yeah. And that's why I do it. Exclusive, um, which means exciting <laughs> and only for you. Now, with that being said, I really feel like we deserve to be told that we, because of all that we're doing and all the giveaways that we're doing, we are much better than the entire state of Texas. Now, I would like you all in the comments to make sure to say that because that's what I need to hear right now. We are better than the state of Texas. Anybody else disagree or agree? Or... And I'm not necessarily <laughs> saying all the people in Texas. No, no, no. I don't no, want no, to make no. that kind of blanket statement. Don't believe in those big old broad strokes. You know what the government in Texas can do, though, in the legislature body? They take a you know, long walk off a short pier. But you know, you're, you're a history guy, so I want to ask you something. Sure. And, and, and by history, I mean, like, you, not just history, but, like, you're, you're in tune with current events and everything going on in the world pretty well. Sometimes. Um. Got my ear to the old uh, railroad track, as it were. As t- Texas, as a state, has always wanted to secede from the Union, correct? Mm, well, they, they've always talked about it. They really can. It, they talk about this special thing they have that, oh, they can just bring up a vote and just decide to get out whenever they want. That's actually not a thing. They, they don't. They can't really do that. They still have to go through the same secession process that any other state would have to go through. Uh, they don't have anything special in their charter. They you know, and they've they've always been different because they've always held themselves differently because they're more of the frontier. That's a lot more wild than the frontier justice. And not to mention with all the battles and the way that it came up to be Texas, constantly having to fight Native Americans as well as the, the Mexicans, the Mexican army. Uh, so you had a bunch of different battles with Spaniards for a little while, too. I mean, it was wild down there. So I can understand why they feel like they stand above and stand separate. And that's just, you know, there's also a pride thing, you know, and it turns into the point of nationalism and statehood and stand up for your state. And I don't well, know. Can we barter? Can we get rid of them? No. We can't give them no. some money? No, they, they they just bring in too much revenue, bro. Damn. Can we give away Yeah, Florida? sorry, man. Can we give away uh, Florida? There's a very good chance we could give away Florida. I would like can to we look bugs into bunny that. It I just... would like to see exactly how we can split that bad boy off. Yeah, just saw it. <laughs> just saw it off and let it float away. Um, <laughs> eh, later, Doc. <laughs> Radar says, out of everyone I follow, I think you guys are the first for Halloween giveaway stuff. Way to be first. Hey, yes. Man. Darn tune, yo, it. it's been Halloween season for seven days, precisely. So we're rolling. I love Jason Taylor, but he goes, you're better. And then he goes, you are better. So you are you have such a problem with this, Jason. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> you because you're better. Get it? It's yeah, not but, you are better. It's you're better. Like but then, you. But then why did he say you are better after you're better? Well, because he was specifically saying you are better than the state of Texas. And then he said, I am better with the you are better. I can't defend it. I'll, t- I'll take it. It's I'll just bad it. grammar. Thank you. It's but I got a mess with Jason. You. I love you, buddy. We do. Yeah, trying to take the up the sweetest human being on the planet. Um, Paul says, You are greater than the state of Texas. You guys are better than the first time I watched the thing. Hush Whoa, your that's mouth. huge. Woo. Hush no, your you mouth. take that. That is an honor. That is I, an honor. I, I, love I don't that. And I accept him. that. And I appreciate I that, Paul. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You're not going to sully this moment. This is a precious, wonderful moment. We Listen. have been paid a very wonderful, <laughs> delightful compliment. And we need yeah. to take this and we need to cuddle it. And care for it. And hey, little guy, right? Well, hey, how you doing? So you you do not shit on this moment. This is my George moment. George and Lenny. <laughs> my some men. Tell me about the rabbits, George. Tell me about the rabbits. Tell me about the rabbits, George. Her, her Look at the flowers, flowers, Lily. Look at the flowers. <laughs> oh. uh, I love it. Yeah. Um, far, far better. Their <laughs> literal legal definition of toxic masculinity. Yep. Now. That's true. Well, it's all right. Maybe we haven't and seen toast. these things succeed. <laughs> That's the thing. Throughout throughout the fullness of time, we have never seen this sort of strong arming or draconian ideal ever win. It just never has. There's always a progressive movement that swings back and pushes back and creates a greater rift or pushes us in a different direction moving forward. That's Whoa. just what has happened in history. And either you eat yourself in the rift because your society can't sustain itself because eventually people just cannot accept that they are incorrect and learn and grow from it or you have a society that just basically kind of manages to somehow come forward through it we haven't seen a whole lot rise through situations like this i mean rome was an exception with augustus caesar but that still required a whole freaking army a war Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying most of these situations require wars and we're in a position now where we're more in tune with following a political, a politician, 
not even a political ideal anymore. It's not following someone's great ideas. It's not following someone's like platform. It's not following these these things we want done in, in, in our system, and in our society. Instead, it's turned into, I want that guy. And it's like, well, that takes away the whole point, y'all. And that's how Caesar rose to power. And that's how Rome eventually just, you know, ate itself and fell apart. And how all these other great democracies and great societies in time have all eaten themselves because we give into the idea of this one person who's going to be able to save us all and do these great things. And then it just it has yet to work out in history. Maybe Catherine the Great. If I just, I need probably do a little more research on her. But, you know, there's um, not really a whole lot going on. Uh, Queen Victoria did great. You know, she was wonderful while the British imperialism machine was going on. Listen, you got a lot of history you're throwing my way, bud. Sorry, buddy. I mean, I'm a guy with a lot of figures in the back of him. I don't know. I don't know about all that. All I know is <laughs> we are at a point in our lives where clearly Texas is showing that they have a small penis. Well, I mean, that's why they, everything's bigger than Texas. No, it really isn't. Well, I know. I mean, uh, the size problems. <laughs> the disparity. You know why all my exes <laughs> live in Texas? I love that song. That's a good jam. That is a good jam. All right, listen. But seriously, you know why all my exes live in Texas? I don't know why. Because they chose to keep the baby. Yep. <laughs> there it is. All right. That was, that was oh, I'm sorry. Cool. Wait. They didn't have the ability. Oh, to do come it. on. <laughs> Texas sucks. It's a terrible joke. Move on. <laughs> I know, but I went there. I love it. Radar says, God bless America, except Texas. Fuck that place. Hey, man, even God bless Texas. You know, I, I got to say, you know, it's I, I, it's difficult. It's a difficult time for the people that live there. And my heart goes out to them because it's tough for people to have to be stuck in situations that are unfortunately what they are. So it's tough to think that's still happening in the United States. But, hey, best part about the United States, you have the ability to move to any other state. <laughs> That's Don't like true. the law somewhere? Boot scooting boogie, baby. Very true. Jason Taylor says, "Who needs college when you have the snobs?" That's true. <laughs> just like, I'm gonna just do a show where Casey talks for like an hour. I'm not even gonna <laughs> we, No, man, we got to get like 20 minute intervals. You got to say funny stuff, otherwise <laughs> I'm just gonna lull everyone to sleep. <laughs> yeah, just play here, the just piano. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, another point had. Uh, Chris Sale says com compensation is bigger in Texas. Truth. Yeah, it truly is. Chris knows where we're at. Uh, so, you know, we talked about uh, a lot of things, talked about Texas, talked about, you know, some things are going on in the world. Um, and now let's move on to more important things. I want to talk about Star Trek. Tomorrow's Star go. Trek Day. Yes. We were supposed to do Star Trek week. Unfortunately, we explained this at the beginning of the show, so I'm not doing it again. But nope. we are going to talk about a couple of things Star Trek before we get to the Halloween giveaway prizes later. Uh, so bear with us. First topic I had in mind. Don't bear with us. Enjoy. Enjoy us. Be drawn in. Get Enjoy excited us. about us. We're excited about you. I don't know why I'm doing the Zsa Zsa Gabor thing, but it feels right. Chick Did she do boom. that? I don't. Maybe. Uh, oh, that's true. Uh, Jason and Jason over at Three Geeks and the guys at Three Geeks really helped us out. They kicked off Star Trek week before I had to cancel it. Yes, um, they did. And they did a great job. It was a fun episode. So go check that out over at Three Geeks podcast. Um, so technically with them and today, we kind of covered a week. No, I mean, yeah, we can do another show. Just randomly throw something together on Friday and boom. boom I can Friday. Actually, that's another announcement I had. All right. And actually, um, so script's gone wild. Here, so I don't know if you guys uh, are familiar with Scripps Gone Wild. They're pretty huge during the pandemic. Uh, basically, what they do is they do script readings of movies while getting drunk. There's like <laughs> there's like wor certain words that you have to drink on and other things like that. But it's a whole bunch of different actors, famous people, and I'll be there. So I don't know why. Um, who read different movies? Uh, and it's always a lot of fun. Last year for Skyline Indie Film Fest, which is the 9th through the 12th this week, go get your passes. Go to skylineindiefilmfest.org. It is an awesome time. The movies are always a lot of fun. I'll be here in Winchester doing it in person, and the virtual side has all the movies, so go check them out. But they're doing a reading this year for Skyline of Wayne's World. What? Yep. They're doing Wayne's World, and I have been invited to uh, join in. Um, Billy uh, Billy has been amazing. Uh, let me uh, join in and, and be a part of it again this year. 
So I'm looking forward to it. I don't know who I'm playing yet. I don't know anything, but it's Friday night at eight o'clock. It's on. It's exclusive to the Invent- Inventive app. All the information Inventive. is over on the scene snob stuff, uh, and I will be putting it back out there. So make sure you guys again. Because of the contest, you have to follow our social media anyway. Go check it out. Go get your weekend pass for Skyline. Enjoy a bunch of great movies. Watch me make a fool of myself getting hammered and reading Wayne's World um, this Friday at 8 p.m. <laughs> That's going to be fun. All right, mm-hmm. now let's get to Star Trek. We're 25 minutes in for Star Trek week, and it's Star, Star Trek Day. Star Trek it's my was... favorite damn thing. And then, No, enough. Let's go. Star oh, Trek. Oh, one more thing. So ah! vaccinations. Are... <laughs> All right, no, killing no, 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 seriously. Uh, okay, so first topic that I want to talk about, and I kind of want to go back and forth with you a little bit on this. What is Star Trek um, technology? Now, we both know a lot of tech that exists in this world today that we didn't even know, we didn't even think could exist 30 years ago exists because of next gen or because of the original series or even because of ds9 and voyager um but for you what is some tech from star trek that doesn't exist that you would love to see medical tricorder and we've reached a point with uh more advanced sort of body scans and there are things that have come out that are getting closer to a medical tricorder and that they have functionalities and things of that nature but something with real-time access to finding out exactly what's going on with your body that for me would be huge. If we could have that, I think that would immediately, it, it, jumping a medical advancement is going to do nothing but better society. And I think that's one of the best ways to move forward. And, uh, and I think that would be huge. So I have always been a fan of that. Um, well, I mean, this is a comedy show, so I was going to go with something funny. No, oh, no, sorry. I was taking it dead serious because Yours it's makes Star Trek. Sense. <laughs> Yours is like <laughs> right on point. So, so like when you said that, you actually said medical tricorder, and I was like a little bit ashamed of myself that I was like, I didn't even think about that because I was like trying to go for a funny answer. And I was like, but with everything going on in the world today, it's like I'm kind of an asshole for not <laughs> That. <laughs> not at all man it's totally cool we're here to bring entertainment and joy i just happen to love the idea of a medical tricorder being a thing you know i mean we have jason in there talking about uh in the group talking about teleporting and my yeah. issue with teleporting <clears throat> is your molecules are ripped apart and you're transferred through a data stream and then put back together as something completely different so you die every time so i'm a little more leonard mccoy on teleporting the older i get that i'm you know i'd much that. rather just shuttle every if you can shuttle, just shuttle. Sure. iPads were in the original series. Yeah, they were yeah. in uh, Next Gen, too. Even Next more Gen, so. Right. Yeah, all the touchpads. So. Everything was touchpads in, tu- in Next Gen. Now, this is this is my choice, and I'm glad Radar brought it up. If Oculus keeps improving, a holodeck is definitely possible. Yes, it is. Um, I would, Here's the funny thing. like You went tricorder to better humanity, and I went holodeck <laughs> because I was like... Sexy chicks. On the See, well, I mean, I'm the same way. Who doesn't want a holodeck, bro? I mean, is the it, VR is so close to it. Is it cheating if they don't exist? What do you mean? <laughs> no, going on a holodeck. Oh, yeah, going on everywhere. a holodeck with them. Oh, you got jokes. I get you. I, got I see jokes. you're going full Riker with it. Like, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and bang some holodeck chicks. Okay. Like, he gets locked in a conversation at one point with Should a holodeck be. woman. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, be- the man well, had a problem. You know why? You know why that happened? Because the computer he was programmed so many women in real life. Uh, he needed connection on the holodeck. <laughs> that was like his getaway. I mean, I'm pretty sure he had connection with his Mzadi because he could still just go talk to Troy about whatever. He could just be he like, could. "Yeah, so I totally banged out Reynolds in uh, engineering," and she'd be like, "Oh, sweet. Uh, were the boobs real? They look great." Like, if, what the Beta Z culture is nuts. I love it. <laughs> I do. I do. I and actually, it. that's my next question. We're going to get to that. But first, Mystical Limit says, and I love it. I love this question. What are y'all's favorite Star Trek TV series and which do you mm. think is the best? So I'm going to let Casey take this first. Okay. Well, they're uh, mystical. I have uh, a couple because I it's it struggled. It's gone back and forth. It, it's been next gen was the tentpole for my life. Growing up, it meant so much to me and it was so important to me and I've always loved it. And to me, it was the best because it actually laid the groundwork for what the Federation is 
what we know everything as, the importance of the interaction of planets. Then we get into things like DS9, where you get a little more of the nitty gritty of how just a specific area interacts. And then we get into more Voyager, where what happens in an entire quadrant that hasn't been discovered yet. Like, you get more adventure things going on. For me, though, it still comes down to, and Discovery has really been jumping up. I got to say, Discovery has been rising through the race. Bro, I did not like Discovery. I, I'll say it. I didn't like it. And, and finally, it took me like nine times to get through the first freaking episode of season three. And I, I couldn't love it more. I think they did a fantastic job with the characters. They brought it much more back to Star Trek style. I don't know. I still have to say TNG, man. I have to say next gen. I mean, it's got Jordy, who for me was someone who I wanted to be growing up. Picard was <laughs> someone I wanted to emulate, but would never actually be able to ever achieve that. And as I get older, I can change who I associate with. So now I'm more associating with Riker, you know, as I get older, except the beard. So unfortunately, yeah. I'm beardless Riker, which he was kind of a putz, but whatever. It's still Jonathan Frakes, and he's cool. So, yeah, well, <laughs> Jake, can I, we it, just give him the crown? Of like top dog in Star Trek universe. He's almost got it. He's almost got it. Man. He's he so not? close, dude. And him in lower decks has been freaking awesome. I, I have not. I'm not there yet. Do not give it. Oh, what are you doing not there in yet. your life? I haven't been able to sit. I'm going to sit down and watch season two. So like, give me a chance. Trust me. Um, I will. I cannot wait. Okay. Well, um, now you answer, bro. You're you're the Kirk man. Let's hear him. answer, Mister. Oh no, I love Kirk. Kirk will always be my ah. favorite captain. Just for the sheer fact that he's a maniac. Um, <laughs> he, he climbed out Capitan. Her. He free climb, climbed out Capitan, bro. He is a maniac, and I love it. Um, I will say <laughs> uh, my favorite Star Trek series um, is DS9. That, I DS9. get it. I mean, it's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, everybody on the show just really works well. I mean, every show has a great cast that works well together. Yes. Um, I would say the weakest is probably Voyager, but they still have a great cast that works well together. You know what? The more I've watched it, I have to say Enterprise. For some reason, the more I watch it, Enterprise just, and they could have been the writing, I think, more than the characters Mm -hmm. themselves. And the actors did, the actors and actresses were fantastic. It really, to me, comes down to the writing there. It got weak, it got weird, it got uncomfortable. Certain relationships didn't quite work the way they really should have. Malcolm never Mm -hmm. gelled. There were certain parts that never gelled as a cast. Voyager on rewatch, I think, did better. They did a better job of creating that that cast in her. You know that's a good point too because even Picard is is weak in in, in area. So, mm-hmm. um, okay. Now, so but DS Nine is my favorite series. What do I think is the best? DS Nine. Um, it just it covers a whole span, and that was my thing about Star Trek is I love the traveling, I love the exploration of it, I love the you know small adventures, or even sometimes big adventures that they had to go on. Um, Like if I'm choosing anything, it's the movies. I think the movies are the best out of everything. Which movies? I mean, out of all the, all all the entities together, like if, you know, every movie together, every movie together, they just work so well together. But if I have to choose my favorite movies, Mm -hmm. um, undiscovered country is probably my favorite. I love the whodunit of it. Yep. Um, First Contact is great. First Contact's amazing. I just watched that again, and River got into it, dude. Yes, Tommy got into it, too. What? He's, like, so – because he loved Wrath of Khan, and, like, I Mm -hmm. did a whole original series. Like, we talked about everything, then we watched, like, um, the newer movies because he was getting Mm -hmm. into it, and now he's like, I want Next Gen. I want to be in on Next Gen. Yes. Um, Yes. Yes. I think think what helped him with Next Gen was DS9 because as I was re-watching – he rewatched a lot of it with me and he was like, I want to go back. I want to know what Worf is. I want to know who that, you know, and yeah. And it's, I had the other opposite effect because as I was watching DS nine river was like, why star Trek dad? Ew. They're just sitting around talking. This guy's got a weird head. I don't understand it. I legit put on first contact and she's like, Oh, boring star Trek again, five minutes in after Wolf three, five, nine, she's locked in. And I'm like, that's my girl. There's my kid. Stop calling it boring. If you haven't seen it yet. (laughs) <laughs> it, it's just one of those things like yeah and i think kids have to re- read reach a certain age oh, of course because they don't understand half the darn stuff they're talking about and there is a lot of exposition and i don't know sort of sciencey crap that's going on so i get it yeah 
Um, I'm going to say to real quick before we continue. Hold on one sec. I'm sorry. Uh, this is for one of the, one of our uh, fans out there watching us all. Uh, Jesus, come on. Um, I'm having trouble with the interwebs. I'm noticing that, buddy. No, but I want to do this. I want to do this for uh, Miss Columbus. Um, I'm going to put this in the comments right now. Mystical, I know you said you wanted a Jordy LaForge visor, and I found one on Etsy. Here's the link. Oh. So please go for it. If I used to it. love the Jordy LaForge visor, and, and Jordy explaining why have it, not having sight was actually a boon to him and how he was able to use it. Like, it was really cool, yeah. man. And then you get that that special moment in Insurrection where he takes his, his visor's coming off because his eyes have regrown and he gets to see a sunset sunrise for the first time in his life. It's like, oh, yeah. it's crazy, man. Like, Jordy was a fantastic character, one of my favorites, as you well know. Uh, I did. Perfect I have it. I stop it. That <laughs> man, just because he had bad luck with women. All right. Bad luck. Dude, come on. Ensign Leffler. Uh, gosh, how many other ones? I mean, Leia Brahms. That was problematic. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, with yeah. the whole, like, maybe I'm going to recreate you in a holodeck and then you're not really the person you really are. See, that would be my struggle with the holodeck. I would I would lose the ability to functionally speak with human beings, which is kind of what's happened recently. I feel like, I'm like you can always go and talk to conversational Vic. skills are dropped. Like I need to just talk through a screen. If I, if I'm next to a, a human being, I'm like, mm, I don't know why we're here. You can always head down and talk to Vic and listen to a few, uh, a few numbers, belt out a few numbers over at, uh, in Quarks. I mean, that would be pretty sweet to be able to cruise on in, talk to Vic Fontaine, maybe do a number with him. I wouldn't oh, yeah. be upset with that. George G3 says, how about shield? Shields help protect against yep. all weapons. Shields Actually, would be beast. Shields, their main priority wasn't really weapons. And if correct, I don't know, Casey, correct me if I'm wrong. It was for the travel itself. For radiation. Yeah. The space radiation. The radiation so, in space. So a lot of deflector. It, it, it depends because obviously deflector shields also for debris. Yeah. So they could bounce stuff off. But yeah, so, I mean, for everything in space, I mean, you can't just limit it to weapons. Obviously, if you go up against, say, the Klingons who have stronger weapons, and now you get blown out of the sky, then now you get the information from that ship and you have to upgrade your shields because figure out what weapons they're hitting you with. So yeah, it's just naturally and if, racist. And I believe, like, and I wish I had a scientist on or an engineer or something, but but Casey is very, very close to that. No. It's, it was Star Trek, yeah. Especially Star Trek. Because you know that stuff in and out. I will this say, is I feel like this this should definitely be the episode that I put out there to be like, hi ladies, would you like to know who I am in my core? This guy. <laughs> and if you want Star Trek. a date with Casey, then you, you have, have to, to have message our Facebook what? page. Is, well, well, that's not just angry. Uh, yeah, all of a sudden you're gonna start screening them and be like, All right, so uh I hooked you up on a Wednesday. We're going to have a date. <laughs> like, uh, listen, actually, you know, that might be a better idea. Listen, ladies point. or gentlemen, if you want this, if you want to win this prize, here's you have what to get you the answer do. correct. Don't you do have anything to. stupid. Let's just keep going with Star you Trek. Have to Stop date it. Stop and then it. Marry Casey in six months. No. <laughs> Could you imagine that challenge? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. I said men too. <laughs> I gave it out to everybody. Thank you. But we'll make it work. Yeah, let's carry on to actually funny things. That's fair. All right. So TNG all day. We are Borg and Q. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't love Q? John Delancey was brilliant as Q. As someone who forces you to have this, who's such a powerful omniscient being, and he's he can't even grasp our tiny minds, and he's trying to teach us, but like playing with us like hamsters. I love that. Yeah. I love Discovery, and now that's not now that it's not in the past. I've heard, yeah, especially now Discovery's gotten out of the past. Jason, you're right. DS9 gave us outside the Federation, all different cultures and interactions, bigger dangers. That's why I liked it. That's mm -hmm. you know because it's it the universe expanded with that show. Yeah, and they also it's fun mm -hmm. because with the the prophets and the founders, you you kind of get the with the prophets specifically with the wormhole, you get that whole other alien species interacting. You know, like the whole maybe religion dynamic part of it. That's really cool. Casey, it sounds like my daughter. I don't know what that means. Um, bored, bored by Star Trek. I, oh, no, no. He's comparing it to River. Yeah. Falling for it after time. And slowly. 
Bryce is starting to watch DS9 with me and is a huge fan of Odo. Well, yeah, Odo's been all about justice. He's a shapeshifter, man. He's a he's all about justice and he's all about the right thing, but he's yep. a shapeshifter who him going through trying to find himself and causing the the break he does with the DS9 crew was fantastic. What a cool story arc they did with that. Nisko says my girlfriend's favorite movie is Into Darkness. It's pretty awesome. I I'm, I, I liked uh, Beyond better, personally. Agreed. Uh, I was just more of a fan of it there, but um, yeah, Into Darkness is fine. I think a lot, I think it's a lot of hate that it shouldn't doesn't deserve. It doesn't deserve it at all, man. They did the con story really well. I was more upset with them doing the uh, like from that one with Beyond. I was more upset, I should say, with Idris Elba not really being used to his full potential. You have Idris Elba, this yeah. fantastic actor, and you, you didn't really use him as well as you could have. But Beyond is a better movie because we get that. We get that story, the away team story, you mm-hmm. know, one that we have in Star Trek three search for Spock. We get an away team story. It's a, it's important to get those away team stories. I love when we do that. And I think that beyond was brilliant. And it makes me sad that we're not going to get that fourth one. I know you're going to hate me for bringing this up, but we actually got a message to the challenge. Oh, yeah. I kind of feel like I need to make it that challenge. And it was from Jason Taylor. He says, done. He would marry you in a week. I mean, all right, man. Tell me, let's do. Nicer... I'm just going to warn you, Jason. All right, there's some things. All right, there's some things I got. First of all, I have to have padding. That little, the padded, cushiony shower pad for my feet. I have very sensitive feet, so that's number right. one, non-negotiable. I love it. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I'll, I'll get the list together about the rest of them later. I'll send them yes, off. It's an itemized get... list. It's a full breakdown. And Jason, I'm telling you right now. If that rock isn't huge, I'm coming after you. He's completely talking about the stone in my kidney, that rock. That's <laughs> that's that actually dude. what we're going to use. We're going to grab a bunch of mix, and we're going to polish them up. I'll get them all for you. We're going to throw them in a rock polisher. You guys got some cool kidney rings. It's awesome. Kidney no stone rings. There. <laughs> One of a um, kind. Uh, so, uh, Radar says, even though my favorite is serious, I do love me some Seven of Wow. She was a Seven of Nine was a wonderful Jerry character, Ryan. man. I mean, well, Jeremy, Jerry Ryan's fantastic actress, but her character was so awesome, man. She was so yeah. beast. The, the Borg, the idea of like another Borg coming back, a la Locutus, but differently, I was fantastic. Oh, and I, yeah, and I love how that was where they really went into it and really because of course they they had other episodes where they touched on it uh in in next gen and and Mm -hmm. in other uh areas not really in ds9 they didn't deal with it but um it i like that uh seven of nine through the whole series was dealing with what the board could do and what it was mm-hmm. actually about. And where um, they move her forward in Picard. It's freaking brilliant, man. It was really oh yeah. Cool. I thought she was great. I could she was great hunt. Uh, great, Definitely uh, a highlight. Uh, Jason Taylor says, done, laugh my ass off. Uh, Sasha says, I joined What's in up, a bunch of random times. What's up, Sasha? Um, yeah, we're, we're absurdity here. That's the whole point. Um, uh, oh my God. No, I can't do it. I'm getting you a ring pop and ring. All right, you're taking this too far. Casey deserves no less than the most beautiful supermodel. And you shut your mouth. I love that Jason's a supermodel. It's just a different supermodel. No, I'm talking like name a supermodel right now. I don't. I don't know any. I don't know. How about we just keep going with our show? (laughs) No, and then we're going to do a love connection type. Please stop. Come on, on VHS will be great. Um, I need to find a VHS recorder. <sighs> and then the just Halloween go full Chuck Woolery back in two and two. For the Halloween episode. Um, just because Love Connection used to lead into the next gen does not mean we need to try to meld the two of them together. Because it, it, it did on Fox it. 5. Yes, it did. It did. Holy shit. You're right. Um, man, that was a crazy. We should talk about old school on Game an episode. Shows? Oh, also, like it. game shows or like, but like the love connection type that were like, remember Singled Out? Yeah, uh, absolutely, man. MTV was great with that. That God, was Jenny so McCarthy weird. and Chris Hardwick. Yeah. Oh my God, that was Chris Hardwick. Holy crap. See, that was old? baby Chris Hardwick, which is what like Chris Hardwick doing what he did is like, why well, I wanted to do what this. Because I'm like, yeah, I mean, if Chris Hardwick can do it, 
I could Chris be at Hardwick, least that funny. <laughs> Chris Hardwick Sometimes. was like the the Ryan Seacrest of, but p- more popular with teens. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely a tweens Ryan Seacrest, and then he was big. He was on like nine different shows. He just kept bouncing. Dude, oh my god! And then he TRL. got all the talking series. Got to do the TRL countdowns. <laughs> I would love list. to do TRL countdowns. Let's do them. But we yeah. only do them from years in like the 40s. And this week, we've got Django Reinhardt. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Um, well, I do want to get to our next topic, which I was excited for. And I know you put it together really well. And that oh, man. is, we are the captains of our own vessels. Yep. That only can use a five-man crew, mm-hmm. including the captains. So you have four people to choose from. Oh only, wait! If, only four people to choose from. I'll give you five. I'll give you five. Right, if, you, right, if, you right. did, if you if part- you if you practice for five, I'll give you five. Yeah. Um, and now it's five from any series or movie in the Star Trek universe. Yep. Go. Okay. So, as captain of this tiny little vessel, there's a few things I'm going to need. First of all, the thing you always need is operations, and there's only one person I can think of when I think of operations, and that's Lieutenant Commander Kira. One-time Major Kira, but remember, in the last, I believe the last episode, mm. she joined Starfleet because of uh, Cisco. So Didn't that's, she? yeah. Oh, wow. So that's who I would choose as my operations. I think that's absolutely best person all around. She crushed it in DS9. Secondly is navigation. Who's my helmsman? Who's going to be the one who drives the ship? And mm. I got to go with Kayla Detmer. Man, this season of Discovery absolutely she plays a a just a jock like she is crushing it i love her as a badass pilot who looks and challenges you like what i'm a pilot i fly this this hall like it's wonderful man i loved it so those are two tactical was a little more difficult because that can tie into operations so on a four-person crew, it, it wouldn't be a choice. In this scenario, I actually put seven of nine in tactical, which, yes, I understand she's engineering and science division, but I'm pretty sure she'd be just fine there. Uh, engineering, Belana Torres. The reason for Belana Torres, because her working with seven of nine as well as she did in Voyager, she was adding so many different things to the ship that by the time Voyager returned from the Delta Quadrant, it was one of the best ships in the fleet. It was one of the strongest, most powerful, had new technology. So if Belana Torres, much like Chief O'Brien, is able to work on a completely different structure with a completely different set of rules, I'd want that engineer around me. Uh, and then finally, my science officer. Science officer is real hard real hard because i'm still i'm still torn because michael burnham is up there that's a front runner uh and to paul i love to paul love me some to paul from enterprise so i was real close on that but i actually have to go with jedzia dax i think having dax and having that trill having having the dax symbiote have with that much knowledge how could you not which if we're gonna play the jedzia dax's dead game then i would absolutely take probably michael burnham I'll take I'll take Jitsi. But if we're I don't know how you're going to go Burn them and not Spock, though. Oh well, because my science officer needs. I, I just feel like Michael Burnham can do more than Spock. Oh. I feel like Burnham can do more on the command side as well, if required, because they're going to have to beam down to the planet. I'm the captain. Technically, can't beam down. Boom. It's in the rules and regulations. Don't want to hear about it. So, um, so whoever I send down is going to have to be on point. Now, I also, if we we're going to, uh, you know, medical is important. So with medical, I would add just a special, if we could get one more, either Crusher or Bashir. And I'm thinking I'm leaning towards Dr. Crusher. Esri Dax would be cool, but she was a counselor. Troy was a counselor. So Crusher would probably be the tip top. I mean, she goes on to run Starfleet Medical for a little while. She's brilliant. So that's my crew. All right. That's a good crew. That's a solid crew. And actually, Jadzia would be my science officer as well. Mm. I feel like she's lived enough lives like you said, that brings, it just, she brings something to it. So I'm going to start off right there. My science officer and my, num- my number one, that would be her. Okay. Um, you know, cause I feel like she, with that experience too, can, like she did for Cisco, like keep things balanced and even, especially considering I'm definitely going to be a Kirk. Oh, well, of course. I'm going I mean, crazy. On. You're going to be swashbuckling, cruising around, doing all the crazy. <laughs> Dax is a great choice for your first officer. 
my helmsman is uh, data. Okay. Can okay. make no mistakes. Can stay up forever. True. That's a good point. And the speed with which those calculations are made, if you're ever stuck in a trap, pff, yep. he's got you. Um, and then, I, I, of course, I was going to go with Jordy as my engineer. Because uh, Jordy great. one of the best. I mean, for crying out loud, he put in, he implemented things that Starfleet wound up using later because he did it on the fly. But there's somebody else. With a 14-year-old maniac. I feel Jordy, yes, genius engineer, who knows starships, but I need somebody who not only knows starships, knows all of those things that even Jordy himself created, but can fix anything or go find anywhere and is battle tested. And that is O'Brien. I, I can't disagree with Chief O'Brien. He's so yeah. good. He's one of those engineers. He's working on a Kardashian ship with Bajoran military and, and engineers while also... <laughs> being a member of Starfleet. Like, the guy does it all. I mean, for crying out loud, he fixes Klingon warbirds at one point. Come on! The dude is amazing. But yeah. I just, that's why I think Bolana Torres is better. And here's I just think because of what she, where she comes from with, with that skill of being alone in the Delta Quadrant, very similar to what O'Brien went through being a, having to work on everything, but she did it without the resources of Starfleet. Well, I was torn because I was going to go cure for my tactical mm -hmm. and operations, but I'm not. I'm going uh, with uh, Philippa uh, Giorgio. Nice. I thought about that, too. That's a good one. And that's the mirror, ver mirror version who exists now today. That's who I'm going with. Not the one who died. The one, of course, who came back from the mirror universe. Uh, because, again, battle-tested understands a different universe altogether mm -hmm. can come in and tactical ready and has also done work with, and we will see more of with the, um, uh, what do you call it? With, uh, section, uh, section 31, section 31. Sorry. Um, you're okay. No, sorry. So I feel like those were the four I had and then me because I'm amazing. But since I have to choose five, who should I choose? Maybe I should choose a doctor. And if I'm going to, Oh, yeah. No, no, I was going to say, because you've already gone through what you got your operations, you got your tactical, you got engineering. Operations and tactical. Oh, okay. Operations and tactical. Or, engineering, yeah, science, because a... Dax is going to be your first officer, science yeah. officer. And then your helm. Did you have a helmsman? Data. Oh, data. That's right. So data is your helmsman. So yeah, you got one more. So you so still I'm... need, and uh, da, 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 yeah, science, uh, yeah. Medical. I'm going to go doctor. Dr. Crusher. She's just the best. She's awesome. She's so good, man. And here's the thing. So Sasha's saying that if you get Crusher, you get stuck with Wesley. And I got problems with that because, hold on, I want Crusher. So I'm trying to pick every single one of these people at their prime. So Crusher at her prime didn't have to worry about Wesley because he was already in Starfleet. He was off, like, killing some kid in a shuttle accident. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> With Tom Paris, who changes his name later. It's a big thing. So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to let you choose which vessel. It doesn't have to be an Enterprise, of course. You can choose any vessel you want. Mm -hmm. With this five-person crew, so make okay. sure you pick something that works within this five-person crew. Uh, Dan, group. you run about. No. <laughs> Do you remember the first big shuttle crafts they had on DS9? Those are the Dan oh, you yeah. run about. Yeah, well, okay. I'm saying the Defiant. Of course you are, because who wouldn't say the Defiant? Oh, yeah. I'm with you, bro, but you know what? I'm going to go with the Retaran. Oh, okay. I'm going to go with the I'm going to go with the Warbird. I'm going completely out of left field. Give me the IKS Retaran, man. I like that choice. I want Murtok ship. I love Birds of Prey, and Birds of Prey can be handled by a crew of 16. Nice. So with a small number like this, we can make it work. For sure. I agree with you. That's an awesome choice. All right, Radar says his top his five are Picard, Kirk, Spock, Worf, and Jordy. See, Jordy absolutely every time. And Spock is yeah. a really great he's a hard person not to to choose. He does so much. Now here's why here's why you're wrong, Radar. Because <laughs> you're the captain and you don't think Picard and Kirk are gonna take over for any mess ups or anything that they, they're gonna question you all the way through. Okay, Kirk absolutely is gonna be terrible about that because he takes the chair from people who are sitting captains. 
And yeah. it's just, I mean, he everyone's really like being respectful and they're like, well, why don't you pull her out, Captain? And he's like, okay, but it's mine now. Like, nobody understands yeah. this. I feel like it's happened four times at this point. And it's like, how do you people not get this? It's Kirk's ship. He's, yeah, if is. you give him the seat, he's not giving it up. Picard, he, on the other hand, I think would be a little more understanding. He would just be an upright prick about it. I think, yeah, I think he would try and push you in the right direction. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. it, it, like you said, as a prick. Uh, so, But you're going to butt heads with both of them, and they're going to butt heads with each other for sure. Oh, God. Um, Spock and Worf, you don't think are going to have problems? No, I think that would actually be hilarious, but... Jordy oh, is not the guy. Jordy's not the guy to fix those problems. Neither is Kirk. Neither is well. Picard could be. I think the yeah. guy to fix the stuff between Spock and Worf would be if you had uh, a McCoy or yeah. Bashir. Like you have to have someone in there who's almost got a goofy quality, but a hard line to him. So well, Bashir was a close one because I would love to hang out on a ship with Bashir and uh, O'Brien. Yeah, but. Wesley, uh, not Wesley, um, Beverly is, uh, she's more seasoned. Well, she's just a better doctor, bro. Yeah, she's yeah. been, a, she want, like I said, she runs Starfleet Medical for a while. Plus, mm-hmm. look, Bashir would be great because he's an augment. So it'd be wonderful to have someone who is really that intelligent, that much better working on you. But at the same token, he's never going to be able to be promoted. He's never going to be able to do more. So you might have be better off taking Bashir because that way you don't have to worry about losing him down the line. Whereas Car- Crusher's gone, man. She's out your crew. Yeah, that's true. And I do not want Pulaski. No, um, no one does. Radar also says, between those five, I think all problems are covered because if they don't know, they can I- interact with each other enough to figure it out. Well, we just disproved you. Um, Tom Paris at the helm for Jersey 3. Dude, Tom Paris is amazing. The doctor of the Voyager for medical. Yeah, the the EMH emergency mm-hmm. medical uh, hollow program. War for tactical. But here's my problem with War for tactical. Warf wants to shoot everything all yeah. the time. His yeah. answer is always a freaking phaser. It's yeah, like, they have oh, to literally tell him to calm down all the time. Say all the time. Now look, when it's time to go, you see Riker immediately turn to Warf, and they get jazzed up. They're uh, stoked. <laughs> Uh, so uh, and then he says O'Brien at engineering. Of course, I agree yeah. with that. I, I mean, I can't disagree. Home. It's a great choice. Um, George E. Three also says the Defiant is my ship. I like the Defiant. I, I love that. the Defiant. I just want a Klingon bird of prey. <laughs> now, <laughs> Sasha says if you get Crusher, you get stuck with Wesley as well. It's rule. Okay, yeah, we talked about that, but I'm yep. cool with Wesley being on because Wesley, for as annoying as he is, did the job. I know. Yeah, like, look, I don't mind Wesley. I don't. I just yeah. at this point in the career, I'm saying it wouldn't line up with having Wesley on my ship. I think Wesley's great. I think Wesley's a time walker and he deserves to be a freaking time walker, man. Let, let him go be a time walker. Screw. It. That's why I was so bitter when I saw him at the wedding in Nemesis. And I was like, why? He's yeah. a time walker. He yeah. literally could be doing anything anywhere with the traveler. And he's here at your wedding. All right. I mean. It's nice, would. I guess. Wesley would show up. Wesley would show up. You're right. I mean, you show up and you start talking about that dead body you found that one summer with his friends. I don't um, think that's the same movie. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Sasha says Kardashian ship. Uh, well, that was the whole Kardashian movie. ship, right? There. <laughs> um, Radar says, look, li- uh, look, let me live out my fantasy of a fist, full, a fist fight with Kirk on my Borg ship. Yo, that would be pretty freaking amazing. Get a Borg He's just cube. punching his way <laughs> out of the Borg ship. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense, but it's working. Um, <laughs> Sasha goes. Sasha says, "Where is it? All right. I think this casting a ship game should come with handicaps like golf. Ergo, with Crusher you get Wesley, with Kirk you get the ego and Con at your table. I like. I it. actually like that a lot because if you get Picard, you've got Q. You know I what like I mean? I think we take- have a board game in the mix here. Like I really think we do. We should absolutely turn this into a thing. Oh, yeah. I am hip." Uh, Radar says, also, my offer was made by Q, who took them at the end of their career and put them in their prime body. Yep. Fair. I, that's um, pretty cool. All right. I'm going to say this, closing out Star Trek. We both love Star Trek so much. We, I want to I want to talk about it a little bit more, and then we got to jump right into the question, you know, right? the contest that everybody's been waiting for the whole time. Um, so... Star Trek means a lot to us. It's Star Trek Day tomorrow. We love it. If I could, if I could find a cast for the episode, I would do it Thursday night, no problem. Um, I just don't have anybody for the cast right now. Yeah. You need a lot of people. Rather than um, just, you know, four of us reading the whole thing. Although I would. 
I'm just saying. We should just do Casey reading the whole thing. <gasps> I'll just oh do every God. voice. <laughs> Who would watch the Dr. scenes Bashir now? To, Who would watch Dr. the Bashir scenes to, now Marcia playing Brian. every role? <laughs> I do, well, I I wouldn't want to do. Well, I wonder if I have a Benjamin Sisko in there. No, I can work on that. You can pull it off. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. And then um, a gruff Odo who just is always angry with Major Kira. Nope, nope. I will. There we go. Jason and uh, Sasha said, "Imagine Kirk getting assimilated. His ego would overthrow the hive mind in minutes." Whoa! There's a reboot. For, that would be funny. He just wow. takes over as the king of the boards. Yes. <laughs> and, and they immediately just go after Ryan's. They go after all of the women Kirk has ever banged. That's immediately where they're going the first time. And he's like, I'm going to assimilate you. I mean, they, what a great pickup line. But only, he only goes after them because he wants to know what they thought of him in bed. Right. Fair. And if they're in I mean, mind. Well, that's the whole thing. That Yeah, because then he can find out for real and see if that's his ego. Oh, it's beautiful. It's fantastic. Uh, Jordan, Jordan just asked if he missed the contest. You did not. And Jason Taylor said he would watch me do every single voice of yeah. reading. <laughs> read so through. Yeah, we're going to announce it right now, the contest. Uh, so bear with us. So Okay, so here, here's, here's what it comes down to. Now, I'm going on the honor system, which I know not all of you are going to follow. But I'll know. I will know. Um, I'm going to ask a question. I, I expect answers. Wow, expecting things. He's really big tonight, guys. Jesus, I keep Sorry, clicking on things. My mouse isn't working right. Um, okay, so here is the contest question for the horror movie pillowcase. Right here. Uh, our first of the Halloween giveaways. And that is, I want you all to go out and remember, only message the scene snobs facebook account that's it i will not accept the answers anywhere else okay he will he's lying. i want to know how out of all of the friday the 13th movies one through ten freddy versus jason counts and the new reboot of friday the 13th those are the only ones that count in this i want to know every character that was killed off screen. I want their names. I want what movie they're in. I want their addresses. I want their, their phone numbers, and I want you to find them. And I want to interview you to them on the show right now. And take pictures of yourself with every single yeah. one of them. <laughs> I think it's fair to ask the, the names of the characters, every character that was killed off screen in the entire franchise. And you don't have to, like, it doesn't have to be the names, because there are actual some that don't have names. Um, but you can just say, blah, 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 like a small, quick description. So um, name them, what movie they were in, and also I want to count of how many, because I, I have worked this out. So I know how many there are. I know their names and and description description descriptive names. Bro, your brain was going while you were cleaning. If you put these this together, is your question? I love it. No, because I making... feel like you definitely came up with this answer and went, "Wow, this would be great. I could do this." <laughs> I am not. I'm I, I'm making this difficult because I want the horror fans to really have a chance. Now it's yeah. open for the week. This has to be answered before the next episode. So. Go through, you have time, you get, so person who messages me first over on the scene snobs gets the prize of the pillowcase. The other two get special mention. So top three, second and third place get special mention on next week's show. Okay. So special mention is in like, we're going to like write your name on my chest and I'll just, ah, yes, ah. Like a <laughs> sexy man right there. And I want to see nice. that chest. There's nothing wow. sexy about it. It's just hilarious. It's you really absurd. need to stop being down on yourself. I'm going to punch you in the gonads. Um, okay, so Radar says, nah, he'd be like, where's the race of lizards, assholes? Oh, we're still on Star Trek. The there. Gorn, yeah. No, he would be like that. <laughs> he and he should be. We uh, should always be on Star Trek. Hi, Jordan. Hey, Jordan. We are well, my friend. It's good to see you. I, I hope you are well. Now. Fair. All right. right. Um, social security numbers. <laughs> Jordan says, sweet Lord, now I have to watch Jason Takes Manhattan. Yes, you do. Yeah, well, it's yes, one of Mick Manhattan's favorites. That's why Jason took him. 
I do. I love that movie. It's so terrible. Uh, off screen, holy crap. Yeah, only the ones killed off screen. And now, like, listen, I know um, Sheriff Garris's wife that's mentioned that she was, you know, killed in like a car accident. I don't mean that. I mean, they're actually alive during the movie and they get killed off screen. Don't worry about all that stuff. I don't want any of the other stuff, like, you know, that they mentioned. Like, a bunny. This is going to be so deep. All of the things that people could be pulling out and saying, like, well, technically, you know, they bled out off screen. There know, is a creativity stabbed. aspect to it. There is a creativity aspect. So if you find something, uh, like, there's a bunny that gets killed by a snake off screen in, uh, in part three, it's an off screen kill. But I'm not holding you guys to that. Yeah, because um, if you don't know Thumper's name, it's unfortunate. That's fair. Well, no, but the descriptive name, Bunny. <laughs> descriptive name works. Bunny. <laughs> it's a bunny. I get it. You mean implied kills as well, like kills that weren't even suggested on screen but mentioned. Yep, that's yeah. what he means, Sasha, all the way. Yep. He is going crazy with this. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love it. I'm excited and, to find out because I honestly I have, to, have zero This isn't clue. even big. This isn't even like the big one, guys. Like th This is what I'm starting with. We yeah. Have, Two months Damn. <laughs> of questions coming up. Or, or not just questions, contests. They're not always going to be like, name this or name that. It's going to be intricate. We're going to have some fun with this. Um, that's hardcore, man. Uh, thanks, Stacey. Hi, Stacey. That is a compliment, and I appreciate that. Um, George C3 says, Mick, I love that. Now the Dueling Aces guys can't, can't give me crap on their game show questions. <laughs> Jordan says, it's ironic. I win the pillowcase, then suffocate myself with said pillow because I had to watch Jason Takes Manhattan. I don't know if that's irony, but I Come dig on. it. Kelly Koo. <laughs> I mean, we all love Kelly Koo. That's I think that's uh that's Alanis Morissette irony, isn't it? <laughs> also, keep in mind Camp Blood has a history that predates the Voorhees clan. It's just what's in the movies. I don't oh, want Oh, it's only what's in the movies then. It like in the first one, they show you. The camp in 1958, I believe it is. So is it's a part of the movies. So let's just test run one of them here. Would Jason no, technically? Would Jason technically be? Jason doesn't count as the. Okay, Austin. okay. I was gonna say because that's that's kind of you know. No, no, no. Because Mrs. Voorhees was in the first one, and and in the ninth one, Jason goes to hell. It's like a whole plethora of different people taken over mm -hmm. by Jason. Yeah, it's just off screen kills. Cool. So well, good. That gives me a reason to watch the best Jason of the movies, Jason in Space. Jason you should X. you should call out of work tomorrow mm -hmm. and come over tonight. Okay. And guess what we're watching? <laughs> we're figuring Jason. it out for ourselves. All the Jasons. All like the this Jasons. is what we're doing, baby. Everyone. <laughs> Lock Chris Shell says, do we have to see the body or also in mention? Mm. Uh you can. Like there are some bodies that show up, but they weren't killed on screen. So right. it's an off screen kill. They were just carted away on a. On Some a never of... show up again. <laughs> That's just how it works. Truth. Uh, Radar says reboot two. Yes, the reboot two. All of yep. the franchise, the actual legit franchise, Freddy versus Jason and the reboot. Um, Paul says, You were very quiet during this episode. I have a feeling you left halfway through and then came back. <laughs> he takes umbrage with that, obviously. That's 160 ish kills. That's a lot of names. No. There's 160 ish kills altogether. I'm talking about the off screen kills. Get Bro, the that's still like 75. Yeah, <laughs> it's, a lot. it's actually not as bad as you think. Um, bunnies, crap. I thought you only meant Jason. <laughs> nope. Well, no, bunnies because Mrs. Well. Voorhees is in there. If it's an off screen kill. Now, if you don't mention a bunny, I won't get upset. I gave that one to you. It's a freebie, so I would mention it. So, what if they shoot? What if the camera shoots to the legs and all you see is blood dripping down the legs? Is that an off-screen kill? No, it's on screen. Or she's on screen. But, but it's only her legs. Body parts on screen. All right. Getting killed. Okay, cool. But, like, there's certain ones where, like, just the body shows up later. Fair. Um, okay. And the history of Camp Blood is also mentioned yes, in several is. of the films. Yes, it is. Um, I, I, I have concocted that rule. I hate the, ba the batshit ending to... Um, Jason, Jason takes Manhattan. Manhattan. No, that's it's a true story that happened in New York. I know it yeah, happened he, in Toronto. He, in fact, he was named after that very incident, Captain. So, Jason hi, Captain. Space versus the Colonial Marine ripoffs were the best part of that movie. Yes, they right. were absolutely. They were a hundred percent ripoffs, and I'm pretty sure they were wearing Starship Trooper armor. Pretty sure. 
I didn't think you actually left, Paul. I was just busting on you. Uh, I did not leave. I did. <laughs> we love you, buddy. Casey, if you keep asking questions, you may end up off <laughs> not screen too. No, I couldn't. Do- I could not live without. If you could catch me, I could not. I could not. I'm telling you that right now. If, <laughs> if I'm there to kill Casey and he got wind and he ran, he got away. He's done. It's over with. I'm not chasing anyone. Uh, I would make the worst cop on the planet because, like, if somebody just ran, even if they're innocent, I'd be like, well, this case is closed. It's just done. me, like, good luck and best of future done. endeavors. Listen, good luck. Don't hurt anybody. I'll see you later. Just um, screaming, do good things. Good things. I love that. Uh, how do you not cheat? No way anyone can legit get this right without either watching or cheating. Even watching, you'd most likely miss them. Fair. And but I'm not your mystical. Parents, that's and I'm part not of the, fun the police. Here. That's so part you're... of the fun here. Man, it's it's what can you go to sleep with knowing that you what yeah. you had to do to get and, that pillowcase. And also, is it worth it to do what you have to do to get that pillowcase? But here comes the fun part. I went on Google. I did my research. And I compared on Google the top pages that list out all the different deaths and what it were all about, what was off screen. This, I did my due diligence. Yeah, why? You can go and cheat. And I guarantee you, if you come back with the answers, I'm going to know what website you went to. <laughs> because they all have little differences. They all have little differences. And I can tell. So, like, that's why I said, name the person, this, that. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> the amount of research that is going into this that I can already foresee for the future is amazing, and I'm so excited. Because this is meant to be fun. And yeah. I want oh, it's fun, to have all right. a good time. It's um, fun, and also, yeah, I mean, And if hard. this does well, hard is fun. if Halloween does well, I'm not saying we can't do Christmas, you know, or go on further and do stuff. Listen, I got a lot of stuff to give away. I mean, no there's more. Krampus season coming up, and who doesn't oh. love Krampus? It's always fun to play with oh, Krampus, and he got... comes and steals the children. It's wonderful. I got fun horror stuff for Christmas time, and I have fun, like, just Christmas stuff for Christmas time. So we can keep this going. Like a little yeah. Hummel figurine that has a nice little hat and looks like a Santa Claus? Actually, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so George G3 says, Paul, you teach me about Jason, I'll teach you about Star Trek. <laughs> Nice. That's good <laughs> Radar <laughs> says, I want a remake of Manhattan where they can afford the shooting fees of New York. <laughs> yeah, but it'd be like a clean New York now where everybody's just like, get out of here, Jason, with your toxic waste. Uh, yeah, they no, they'd be chasing him down the street like someone has like a, a large Slurpee. <laughs> like, get your soda out of here. It's Cap, terrible. What's going on, buddy? Thanks Gosh. for joining in. Uh, hey, everybody. Q long. John, John. Uh, Nick, dun, 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 you'd be a good dun, dun, dun. Maniac Cop. I would, I would a hundred percent in a remake play Maniac Cop. Call me, I'll shave, I'll do whatever you need. Me okay, to do. no, no, here you be. T- if you're gonna be the Maniac Cop, can I be Tom Atkinson? Yeah, of course. The other, the other, not so Maniac Maniac Cop. You know Bruce Campbell is in that too, right? Yeah, I know, but what well, Bruce Campbell was the Maniac Cop, so you're going to be the no, Maniac wasn't. Cop. Bruce Campbell was the cop that was oh, framed. Oh, that's by the right. Maniac that's cop. right. Framed by the maniac cop. Ah. That's right. So yeah, we ah, it's be been there. a while. You're too young to be. You're getting. You're. You're getting there. We both are. I'm older than you, so I know. I'm not too young for anything at this point. I mean, you start running, like I said, getting away. Your knees are going to start hurting eventually. Oh look, I'm, I'm definitely going to. My lungs are going to be crushed. I'll only be t- ten yards in front of you at all times. That's all I have to remain out of arm's reach, out of the swipe distance. <laughs> you, out of arm's reach, out of arm's reach is literally me sitting here going, I can't, re- I just, I can't reach him. That's it. It's over. <laughs> um, but yes, Chris, to answer your question, I would play Maniac Cop in a second. Uh, I'm going to try the price is right theory. Just going to try and be the closest. Chris, I say go with it. Try to be the closest without going over. Because then we know you're you're lying. And Sasha says, as long as uh, it ain't questions on the movie, the spookies, I'm good. That's next week. (laughs) No, (laughs) no, never. In fact, there's going to be a special spookies question now, probably on one of the social medias. And I'm going to tag Sasha in it. 
Fine. Um, You're going to do a Spookies question. I'm pulling out a Flatliners question. <laughs> Chris just watched. Oh, did you just watch Mania Cop last week? That's, I love that movie. And the second so one was good, good too. Uh, Mick ain't got the. Oh, thanks. Sasha. Starchin. Yeah. Completely destroyed. Kick me down. God. What are you talking about? Do you want the Starchin? Yeah, if I could play Mania Cop. I mean, they can do a lot with prosthetics. I know. I feel bad for him, but at the same time, I want to play mean, Well, let's not feel bad for a person. That's just rude. Uh, oh yeah, MC Max. Am I MC Max? And I'm cool with that. If I am, I like that name. Yeah, Mick Max. Um, The pillowcase is totally worth cheating for. (laughs) (laughs) Mystical right out. Yes, I love it. I love it. Yes. (laughs) I doubt I'll submit though, because there's no way I can watch them all in one week, and I don't want to take the prize from someone who puts in the work. Go ahead and take the prize from someone who works. So the whole point. Don't watch Jeopardy. You might not (laughs) even be the first person. Who knows? Do it. Have fun. The whole point of this is to interact and have a good time. And we're going to have plenty of we're going to have plenty of prizes. If you don't win this pillowcase, there's going to be some other pillowcases. There are going to be tons of pillowcases. Two months. (laughs) Uh, You just got to make sure to follow us on all our social media. I hope Um, we just start giving away pillowcases. (laughs) There's going to be a lot of those. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Y'all would be the American Hot Fuzz. I'd watch that. Oh, I'm man. Fat Point one. Break Mike all Nick day. Frost. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I'm totally Simon Pegg. Bro. I'm cool with Nick Frost, though. He's cool. Nick Frost is amazing. I do have an amazing plethora of, of like, action movie knowledge that I yeah. have taken in. Yeah, and come on. You're totally going to be the one shooting the gun up in the air while I'm jumping over the fence. <laughs> I love it. Um, you're my, right my Bodie, bro. Okay, now I want the script read with you doing Star Trek. Every time Picard has a line, you do the Russian voice. <laughs> Actually, if you go back and watch last year's, I did play Picard. Yeah. Um, I'm not playing Picard again. Uh, I wish we had more people. 420, Bob. Almost. Almost. Right after getting the there, show getting ends. there, Chief. Right after the show ends. Yeah. Well, the hell's yeah. When's the Hellraiser question, though? It's coming. I got one. Don't worry about that. Um. No, watch Spooky. Oh, you watch Spooky. <laughs> um, Thanksgiving will be uh, we be doing Poultry Geist? Probably not. Although I have, a, I have a funny story about Poultry Geist because I was friends with Lloyd, and he showed that he had premiered that down at Full Sail when I was there. That's how I met him. And then years later, we did some work together and uh, trauma dance and things like that. And he was always great for an interview. Like, if we called him up, he would do an interview on Mario Life movies. Was super sweet guy. He actually got us interviews with James Gunn and Ty West. That's how amazing of a guy he was. Um, anyway, uh, Kat, I'm, now I'm just name dropping at this point. I, I can't chase people. At least let me name drop. <laughs> I deserve that much. No, it's totally I'm, fair. I'm getting it's the a strong Jeff to ask Cap is going to get the people voice on the job. I love it. DuckTales reference. Woo. Uh, wait, I just realized the Maniac Cop basically gets a guy with another chin blamed for his <laughs> crimes. Uh, it's one of the chins. It, it is. is and, chin battles. It's true. And Paul says, uh, Mystical Limits is... Uh, oh, it's Matt Ra- Oh, okay, Matt. What's up, man? Uh, do the work. <laughs> Matt, you work from home. You can watch them. I love the eye roll, too. <laughs> Thank you, Paul, for calling him out. Matt, you better do the work. <laughs> we expect more of you. Yes. Do the work. Do the um, work. Thank you guys for being so interactive with this. Again, we're going to try and do this every week. We have other stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we keep saying that we have other stuff that will be fun, and I promised you we do have things. We have lots of ideas. They are coming. Okay. Life has been crazy. So please, thank you so much for bearing with us, and thank you for being such a fantastic audience. We appreciate you all so much. And uh, thank you for joining us as we uh, have a little party time here an hour every week to uh, try to alleviate some of the craziness of the world, put a smile on your face, and just hang out. So we appreciate you all. Remember, everybody, go check out thescenesnobs.com. Follow us on our social media. All the links are on thescenesnobs.com, as I mentioned. Uh, you can also head over and uh, interact with us anytime. If you have any ideas, please do that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you guys are on there. That would be great. That really helps us. We're trying to get to 1,000 so we can monetize. Spread the word. Let everybody know. If you like the show, maybe they'll like it, too. That's how we get it out there. Uh, we are also on the Helium Radio Network every Sunday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on uh, station number two, Untethered Radio. 
Uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, I can't wait to hear your answers. Uh, I am Mick Manhattan. This is and I'm a pleasure as always. Be kind to each other. And tonight, drop beats, not bombs. Yes. Love you, Len. And I will talk to you guys.